Hello, uh, this video is going to be on manipulating data using dplyr, at least the very basics of it. It's going to start off exactly where the last video left off. Uh, so if you are starting from scratch, I would recommend starting from there so you can see exactly where we are. All we've done up to this point in this video is we've created some objects. We've manipulated those objects by sending them through some functions. Uh, and we've also talked about how we can get a vector of multiple objects in a row. We can compile those vectors together into a data frame or data set. Uh, that has multiple vectors of the same length all next to each other in sort of a spreadsheet format. Once we have a data set, we can pull variables out of that data set using the dollar sign or the double square brackets. Then we can do a function, we can send those objects, those vector objects through functions like mean, uh, which will calculate out the mean for us. Uh, we know how to get the, uh, set the arguments of a function by looking for the names of those arguments and saying something like x equals empty cars sill to set the x argument of our mean function. If I want to, uh, but I actually don't need to name it as long as I'm going in the order that those arguments are presented. And uh, I can skip the order by actually naming the arguments that I want. So here I don't need to specify the first one. It's the first argument. So it becomes the first argument here. It knows that the X is empty car sill, but I want to skip trim. I want to go to na.rm. So I need to actually say na.rm equals true. Okay, so uh, what I have so far is all of this. Right. What I want to do is I want to make it a little bit easier for myself to manipulate data. So I'm working now with data uh, and I want to do some things. I want to like create some new variables. I want to maybe trim down the number of variables that I have. Maybe I want to select just a few, uh, filter just a few of the observations that I have. And then we're going to do this uh, with the dplyr package. Now dplyr is a part of the tidyverse package. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up the entire tidyverse. Uh, and this will load up a number of functions that we are going to use a major one of which is called dplyr. And what dplyr is, is it's a set of basic verbs for manipulating data, basic functions, and a way for chaining those those, uh, those things together so as to make it a lot easier to read the code. So, because let's look, for example, at this equation, or at this function right here. So what's going on? So I take this empty cars, I pull the variable out of it, I feed that into a function, and then I set another, op another argument for that function. That's getting nested very quickly. If I wanted to do something like pull out just uh, take this take the average number of cylinders just for certain kinds of cars like let's say I wanted to get it just for uh, uh, automatic transmissions I'd have to do something like this empty cars a uh, empty cars dollar sign am equals one so now we're starting to get complex right what's going on here well I'm using the same indexing that I did before when I was looking in a vector but now I'm looking in a data set I say I want I want these rows comma all the columns right I want the rows for which empty cars am equals one. This is going to give me trues and falses. As I mentioned, I can use trues and falses to index a vector. I'm taking those trues and falses. I'm using them to index my empty cars. Uh, then I'm taking the indexed version. I'm pulling cylinders out of it, and then I'm putting it through mean, right? This is starting to get really complex, and there's a lot of steps to follow, and there's a lot of parentheses and square brackets to make sure that they all balance. dplyr is going to help us get around that. So what do I want to do? So let's replicate this right here using dplyr. Okay, so the first vdplyr uh, 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 function that I'm going to tell you about is filter. What filter does is it picks rows from your data set. Okay, so uh, all I need to do is I need to do filter, empty cars, and I want the am variable to be equal to one. This will give me just the uh, the rows of empty cars for which am equals one. Notice I didn't have to do dollar empty dollar sign or empty cars dollar sign am one uh, am. It just knew that I'm working with the empty cars data set because I got it right here and it pulled it out. So that would replicate this part right here, okay, in a slightly easier way. Uh, so this should give me the exact same result both times. I'm, I'm getting the whole data set back, but only the rows that I want. Filter picks rows, okay? So, uh, but I can actually make it even easier than this because dplyr also introduces something called the pipe. It actually doesn't come from dplyr, but dplyr uses it. What the pipe does is it takes whatever's on the left side of it and it makes it the first argument of the thing on the right side. Remember how we talked about the order uh, that the arguments come in? It turns out to be really important. So if in instead of writing this right here, notice that empty cars is the first argument of the filter function, right? So every dplyr command is going to take the data set as the first argument. Why is that important? Because this means that I can take a data set, pass it to a dplyr function, then take the result of that, which is also going to be a data set, and pass it to the next dplyr function. How's that going to look? If I can just say take my empty cars data set, and then pipe, which is per percent and then a, a, a greater than sign and then another percent, uh, filter am 
equals one. That's gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna take my empty cars data set, it's gonna ship it along through the pipe, it's gonna make it the first argument of this filter function, which is gonna be giving me the exact same result as before, okay? So now that we have this, let's keep working on replicating this right here. The next dplyr argument that I'm gonna show you is called pull. Pull does the exact same thing as uh, the dollar sign for pulling a variable out of a data set or the double square brackets as pulling a, data, a variable out of a data set. So I can pull the cylinders variable. So when I do this, now I'm no longer working with a data set, I'm now working with a vector. Uh, and so I've taken my data set, I've passed that along to the filter function, which picks just some of the rows, and then I've passed that smaller data set onto this pull function, which pulls out the vector that I'm interested in. Okay, now I'm no longer working with a data set, I'm working just with a vector. But I can use the pipe on a vector too. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pass that vector along to the mean function. Uh, now the first argument of the mean function is x, which is just the vector that I'm passing in here. I can set the other arguments as well. I can say na.rm equals true, and that will still work. And this should give me the exact same result as when I ran this version up here. So I'm passing things along, which makes the code a lot easier to read, right? This is a lot clearer, it's a lot clearer to see what I'm doing than when I'm doing it up here. I'm taking my data set, I'm pulling out just some of the rows, I'm then pulling out a particular variable from that data set to turn it into a vector, and then I am taking the mean of that vector. Okay, so filter picks rows, that's the first data of, uh, command that we're gonna talk about from dplyr. And we can use the pipe to chain everything together, and we can use pull to get a vector back out of our data set. Now let's also have a select. Select picks columns, okay? So um, if I only want my data set to contain some of the variables in it, I can use select. So instead of uh, uh, filtering to just those rows, I can say uh, select MT cars and what, va what variables do I want? So notice that there's a dot, dot, dot here. That means put in as many variables as you wanna keep. So let's say I wanna keep the cylinders variable, I wanna keep the AM variable, uh, and let's say that I wanna keep the miles per gallon variable. This will give me back a data set that's just those variables. And if I wanna just work with that data set from now on, I can say, okay, keep in mind, I've done this, this I've run empty cars through this function, empty cars still has all of the variables in it until I overwrite that object with the version that has select in it. But of course, this isn't the most efficient way to write my select function, I should say empty cars, and I'm gonna pipe that to my select function, and I no longer need to put empty cars in here. Right now I just have these objects right here. Maybe I want my data set to include only these variables and only the, tra the automatic transmission. So I can then pipe this select function to a filter function. So now when I get back and I look at empty cards by itself, it's just gonna have the am equals one rows and it's only gonna have these three variables in it, okay? So I've uh, now overwritten empty cards with this new version of empty cards that only has these columns and only has these rows. Uh, select is different from pull, by the way. Select gives you back a data set that only has those columns. Pull literally takes one of the columns out and turns it back into a vector from a data set. There's one other dplyr command that I wanna talk about right now. There are other ones to go through, but these are the main ones I'm gonna talk about now. We've already talked about filter. We've talked about select. We've talked about pull. I'm also gonna talk about mutate. Mutate creates a new column, okay? So what I can do here, I can take empty cars. I want to overwrite that with a version of empty cars that has a new variable in it. So I'm going to take empty cars, I'm going to pipe that to the mutate function, and this is going to let me create new variables. So let's say I want to create a variable called high miles per gallon, uh, and that's going to be equal to one if you have a miles per gallon that is above the median, okay? So I'm going to say uh, mpg, or a uh, high mpg, that's going to be the name of my new variable, I'm gonna set that equal to, notice that the assignment, that little arrow operator doesn't work here, I have to use an equal sign. That's gonna be equal to if the miles per gallon variable is above the median of the miles per gallon variable. Notice I didn't have to do MT cars dollar sign MPG, it knows what I'm talking about. So this is gonna be, first of all, I can tell it's gonna be a logical variable because this, this statement is either true or false, either your miles per gallon is above the median or it's not. Uh, and it's gonna take this this, uh, this logical vector, and it's gonna store it as a vector in my data set called high miles per gallon. And I can look at my data set now, and it's got this series of trues and falses where the falses are the low miles per gallon, the 21s, and 22s. The trues are the high miles per gallon, the 33s and the 34s. I can then do whatever I want with that vector. Uh, so let's say, for example, 
uh, I would like to do empty cars. I'm gonna pull out my high miles per gallon variable. And uh, what do I got? Let's see, uh, let's take the mean of that. No, actually, let's let's do the sum of it. Let's count how many trues there are. So I've taken my, my data set, my empty cars data set. I've pulled out the high miles per gallon variable. I'm gonna sum up all of the, the I'm gonna sum up the variable, which is gonna turn the trues into ones and the falses into zeros. And notice I'm not storing this anywhere. I'm just putting this on a line by itself. So it's gonna show me the object and it's gonna tell me that there are six trues in this data set. All right, so what we've done in this video, we've talked about loading up the tidyverse, which has dplyr in it. We've talked about some of the functions that dplyr has. One of the most important ones is the pipe, uh, which actually comes from the Magradar package, but you can get it from dplyr. Uh, and what the pipe does is it takes whatever's on the left side and passes it to be the first argument of the function on the right side, which can be very handy for making your, uh, your code a lot easier to read and letting you do things one step at a time rather than having them in this big nested mass like we have here. We talked about four think functions that come from dplyr specifically. We talked about filter for picking just particular rows. If I feed filter a logical statement, uh, this double equal sign, by the way, what this does is it's not assigning am to be one, it's checking whether am is equal to one or not. The double equal sign checks, the single equal sign assigns. So this checks if am is equal to one and it picks just the rows for which that's true. Uh, we also talked about select. So while filter picks rows, select picks columns. Uh, we also talked about mutate. Mutate creates a new column from the old ones. And we talked about pull. Whatever our data set is, we can pipe it to pull, and pull will pick out just one of the vectors that we give it, uh, that we name. It will give us back a vector, which we can then send to a vector uh, calculating function. All right. Those are sort of our introductions to R. Hopefully that will give us enough to get started as we go next week into ordinary least squares. Thank you.